So welcome back. This is our the second video of the pinch bowl technique process that I demonstrated last time. So these were the ones we made last time. It's been, to give you an idea, because I know video time is unclear, it's been a week. So these are pretty stiff, so there's not much more I can do with these. So I have some new ones that I've created over here that are in a softer form. So these are still workable. I can still pinch them, I can still shape them. If you run into the surface cracks I talked to you about last time, you can always put a little bit of slip on there and smooth them out. Remember from last time, your hands will take the moisture out of the surface. Though sometimes the cracks can become their own visual surface as when we glaze it, it might become a subtle piece of your process that shows that history or that time. Same with your finger marks. If you leave them and you fire it after you sign it, then those marks will be permanent forever. One of them, if you remember right, I showed you how to make a foot ring and attach it last time for slipping and scoring and we textured it. So I'm going to take this other one and flip it over on my board and what I'm doing is tapping like if you've ever gone to the grocery store and went to look for a cantaloupe or, or a watermelon, I'm tapping so I can hear the thickness. So if you hear a hollow sound, it's thinner there. Which means when you, if I do any decoration here with my knife or my carving tools, then it will change the surface. Or so that I don't want to dig through and make a hole, unless that's something you want to have. Let's say you decide this pinch bowl that later on in the future you decide you have a function for it and then you want to make it a little planter. Then you could cut a little hole in the bottom right here right now, and then it have its draining hole. But I'm going to show you a couple different things. So I'm going to take my fettling knife and I'm going to hold it with both hands and I'm going to facet this bowl. And this is what I was saying about making sure you have enough thickness. If you're too thin or too aggressive with the cutting, you're going to end up with a negative space or a hole. And then you'll have something else. It won't be the same object as you started with. You can try to fix it by slipping and scoring and adding some clay to it, and that, that is possible. So, so now I have faceted this bowl. So now it has sides. So when we glaze these, remember these are our first test glaze pieces. It, so now this looks like, um, the facets look like a little bit like a gemstone or a piece of nature. If you've ever looked at basalt rocks, they come in uniform six or eight sometimes, the way they, they cooked over time. So I can burnish this. I can still smooth this out with my fingers to make it polish a little bit. And especially if the clay is smoother, of course, we're using a little bit sandier stoneware. I'm going to take this bottom because I want this to sit a little bit flatter. I'm going to tap it. And if it doesn't go flat, I'm going to take my fettling knife and cut a little bit. And then I'm going to run my fingers on it. And now it's flatter. So now I have a defined form for the bottom, the defined sides, a defined rimmed a little bit. Now that I'm to this point, I will use a tool, a carving tool or marking tool, and I'm going to just put what is my basic signature. I know from when we went over the syllabus, I explained how to sign your work. I'm going to sign this so with my what's called my potter's mark. It's a mark that I developed. For my, to indicate my work. And then later on, I'll sign my last name later. So there I've carved my name on the bottom. So later on, when we glaze this, we'll wax or wipe the glaze off the bottom. When it fires, you'll be able to identify this is yours. So this is something we can do. Signing, carving, this is now done. So what, to put it away, I usually dry them a little bit slower. So thinking of your location, wherever you're at, if this is ready to be to dry out, Rather than leaving it uncovered like this, the air conditioning could dry this too fast and you can get cracks. So what I'm going to do is I'll put it on my board, a different board than this one, and then I'm just going to drape a piece of plastic over it like that. There's going to be some airflow below it and it'll start drying naturally a little bit slower. It's just to slow down the drying time. Uh, one of my favorite things about working in Arizona when I teach summer classes is I can make a piece like this stick it outside for 10 minutes, bring it back, finish it, then put it, drape it and cover it, and then the next day actually it's dry enough for me to put outside to get fired the first time. So that's what I'm doing with 
the bowls that were from last week that are a little bit drier. I'm going to just carve them and finish them. Okay. The newer ones, I'm going to show you a little bit different technique. Last time we made a foil and flattened it out and then we cut it and we went through all the steps to make a foot ring this way. Today I'm going to show you a little bit different way to make a foot ring. So my pinch bowls on these ones I have intentionally left a little bit thicker at the bottom because I made these yesterday so I'm going to make my foot ring, rather than adding a foot ring, I'm going to sculpt it by hand. So again, I'm going to flip this over, I'm going to take my thumb and push in and turn the turntable and make a negative space and I already think of when I'm doing this, if you've ever seen vegetables or fruits, sometimes you see a little pocket to them. Um, I already think of coconuts having an indentation in them. So I'm making that part, the first part of my foot the inner part. Then I'm going to do what we were doing last time. I'm actually going to pinch this excess clay carefully with my fingers. I'll move to the side so you can see a little bit better. So I'm going like this as I go and I'm pinching out a foot ring. I'm actually making this out of the extra clay that I had left over at the bottom. So if you leave your pinch bowl a little bit thicker at the bottom, you can actually start creating the foot ring by hand. I'm going to take my finger or my thumb or my finger and I'm going to push on this edge right here and turn and expand the curve of the bowl to the foot ring and you can see that the foot ring is starting to become more defined. Remember this tool that's in your pottery kit it's usually used for throwing on the wheel but I use it for hand building all the time. I'm going to take the 90 degree angle and push and turn and define this ring even more. So you can see now, unlike this one that I made a coil and put it on, this one now has a ring naturally made by hand. So it's a little bit more organic. It looks more like somebody manipulated it or worked on it. Now, when you open and look on the inside, you can see the indentation of it being pushed in. So now I'm gonna take my thumb and feel with my finger on the outside like this and I'm carefully going to work that edge and re-smooth everything back. You don't have to, it's just one of those things that I've always done but you can always leave the ring on the inside too and that can define things differently there too. Now since this is still soft I can still pinch it to thin it, make it even more thin and the little bit different than the other one Last week, when I was done, I left this like this. This one, because it's still wet, if I leave it sitting like this, it might sink down on itself, especially if this edge gets really thin. So when I'm done with it, I'm actually going to flip it upside down and leave it like this to stiffen up more. That way it doesn't sink down on itself. That way this foot, in about an hour of leaving it out like this, it's going to be stiff enough then I can reflip it over like this. It's not going to drop down on itself. Okay, so we're going to leave this one alone. The other thing you'll notice is I put a different texture. This is a, an old gear that looks like a flower. So I look for textures all over the place. So I'm always looking around for objects and things that I can use for texture. So I'm just going to push this gear into some of the walls to make more of that flower pattern. You know, it's not very distinct right now. I'm not pushing that hard, but it's enough that if I use the right glaze, you'll see the pattern a little bit. So I'm going to move this to the side because this one's done. It's just waiting for me to sign. The other one, I'm going to do the same thing, except that I'm going to actually use this tool, which is one of the, another one of, in your pottery kit. This is one of the trimming tools. There's two different ones. One has a bigger ring on it. This one has a smaller one. And I'm going to feel this first. Again, my thickness here is about that much at the bottom. So I have enough to carve or to push out or press out. So I'm just going to flip this. Right now what I'm looking at, it's kind of angled funny. So I'm going to put it on the table, push down a little bit. Then I'll stretch it out and you can see now it's flatter. So it gives me more of a foundation to start with. I'm going to take this tool, but you can use like a popsicle stick or even a pencil. And I'm just going to run 
a circle around to give me a little bit of a guide of where I want to put a foot ring. Now I'm actually going to take this tool, the round side of it, and actually going to carve a section away. Again, I'm going to tap a little bit just to listen. And the, the key with this one though, since this clay is still wet, if you make a hole, then you can slip and score and just patch another piece of clay into it because it's not as dry as the other ones. But I'm actually going to carve this down to start my ring. Then I'm going to use my finger. My, I use my thumb a lot for everything. And then I move back with my index fingers the other direction. And I would use both hands this way. So whatever is going to get you to a finishing point. And I want you to practice getting a feel with your hands, feel of the material, and get an idea of how everything works. The other thing I can do, since this clay is still soft enough, I'm going to take this tool again, which is our rib tool, and I'm just going to push into a side, physically push the clay in, and I'm going to actually start squaring off this foot. So instead of round, I'm actually making it into a square foot. And you can see how the shape is different than the ones that I made earlier. Now it also, when we look at it from here, you can see the lift of the foot that I made a pretty heavy duty type foot on this to this bowl. But again, these are going to eventually be your bowl and it, I'm just giving you different options, different ideas of how you can approach this. Now since I have this shape, almost like a piece of, um, like a big loaf of bread, I'm actually going to take my fettling knife and remove a little bit. And there are a lot of videos out there, especially Japanese potters, that you'll see that about carving clay. There's just a lot of videos out there. So I'm just doing a real basic carving on this one. But it's actually a very common thing, common um, practice in some parts of the world doing this this way. Now the middle, it's actually a little thin. I can leave this this way or I can make a circle in there like I did the one before or I could carve a little bit. And actually what I'm going to do on this one is take my fork and create a texture on the bottom a little bit to give it some lines. But I'm going to leave this side smooth because I'm going to put my name on the side of this foot versus the bottom of it. So that way I have a decoration pattern on the bottom and my name will be right here on the side of it. I'm going to pinch this a little bit more. I'm going to fix the inside. Again, the same thing as the other one. It's still wet. So if I leave it sitting on this too much, it's going to sink until it stiffens up a little bit more. Okay. Now to show you a little bit different texture, I'm going to take this tool, which I know is not in your toolkit, but it's just a rounded tool that they sell. And you can find, um, I find them, these types of ends on a lot of wooden tools that are used in kitchens. And I'm just going to use the end of it to push and make a pattern around this too to create a little bit uh, more like a snake decoration. Then this tool, this is actually a piece of clay that I made a shape on one end and then fired it and I make my own texture stamps. So you can see it fits in my finger because all I did was I had a piece of scrap clay like this, made it into a coil, tapped one end, then on that day, I had really smooth shoes. Right now I have a little bit more texture and I'll make a stamp of my shoe print this way. Then I'll squeeze this right here and then I put my initials there and then I'll fire this. And then I have a clay stamp for later that I can put onto pieces too. So you can make your own tools and that's what I'm getting at with this. This is just a piece of clay that was left over. I pushed in this end here and pressed it into a tool to make it more of an L and now I'm going to use it to put a secondary texture on this. Now these textures that we're doing are the breaking up of the surface. When we pick the right glaze in a couple of weeks, these first test pieces, I'm going to fire them. And then you will see visually 
what happens with the interaction of the texture and the glaze or the layer of glass that we put on top. So as the glass melts, it becomes like a syrup, like you're putting on pancakes. And it melts and moves around. So as a glass goes into a liquid state in the kiln, it will fill into these grooves and it might change colors. It might thin out and be a different color here and then inside be a different color. And that's something we'll be talking about in a couple of sessions from now. We'll be talking about glazing a bit more. And glaze exploration is a whole different subject. I know I'll be posting a lot of it online and we'll be talking about glazes as we go through the semester. But the first step is was we're gonna construct. Once you construct and you have a whole bunch of pieces created from pinch bowls to other sculptural objects and then later wheel work, we're gonna take those, and then you get to experiment with the different glaze processes. Then you will start figuring out how it all works together to get a finished product.